Fluid Mechanics, Chapter 4, Lecture 1, Conservation of Mass. So in Chapter 4, we're going to break this, this chapter into two lectures. The first lecture, we're going to look at the average velocity and the volumetric and mass flow weights in a conduit. So when we talk about volumetric flow rate, what we mean is the rate at which the volume of fluid flows through a cross-sectional area. So here, for example, we have a, a cylinder, we have a cross-sectional area, and we have velocity flow through the, uh, through the conduit. Now, in a real uh, conduit, what happens is the velocity is highest in the middle, and as it gets toward the edges, it gets smaller because you have friction against the sides of the edges. So in general, we define uh, Q, which is the flow rate, as the velocity dotted into the differential area vector and that integrated over the cross-sectional area. And this is measured in uh, typically in meters uh, cubed per second or feet cubed per second. So now for average velocity, we make it a little bit simpler. So here's our integral from the previous slide. Well, we sort of ignore, we sort of assume that the, we have an average velocity. Uh, so it's not as big in the middle as it was in the in the real case, and in, in the edges it's a little bit bigger. So we take an average of it. So in this case, uh, you know, if we make v here the average velocity, we move it outside the integral. We just have the integral uh, of dA over the area. But that's just a. So uh, you know, as a result, q the volume flow rate is just v dot a. Again, V and A are vectors, so we have to kind of be careful with that. Uh, but in general, uh, in a lot of our cases, they'll be in the same direction. Another quantity we're interested in is the mass flow rate, which is obviously related to the volumetric flow rate. So we have a, a fluid passing through a cylinder, for example. The differential mass that's, that's at any given point is, is equal to the density times the differential volume. So the, the, the differential volume is simply VDT dA. And so if we uh, divide both sides by DT, uh, the DTs here cancel. And so we're left with DM over DT is rho V dot dA. Uh, so the rho and then and the V and then dA and the DTs cancel on both sides. So uh, the fluid is incompressible then the density is constant, so that can be pulled outside the the, uh, the integral. And we have the, back to the similar situation we had in the slide before. Uh, if we look at the average velocity, that can be pulled out, so you get uh, rho v dot a is the mass flow rate, which you can see is related to the volumetric flow rate. Right? The, the only difference really is the density. So let's look at example 4.1. Here we have the velocity profile as seen here for the steady flow of water through a 0.4 meter pipe is defined by the following, following formula. We want to determine the volumetric flow through the pipe and the average velocity of the flow. So we can calculate the flow rate as the integral of V dot dA and since uh, the velocity is, is not constant we have to actually use the integral. So we integrate from, from the uh, center of the circle out to the radius, which is 0.2 meters. Uh, this is our formula for our uh, uh, velocity. And uh, dA is simply uh, 2 pi r dr. That's, that's the, the cross-sectional um, differential area. So when you perform the integral, you get, uh, and plug in the, the limits, you get uh, 0.188 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per second. Now, we were asked for the average velocity, so that's going to be uh, the flow rate we calculated divided by the, the area. Um, so we take the answer we have here divided by the, air, the area, pi r squared, um, and we get uh, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second, which is 1.5 millimeters per second. So back in, in physics, when you studied uh, Newton's second law, things were relatively easy. Because, if, for example, if you, if you had an object with a certain mass and you applied a certain amount of force, we could very easily calculate the section of law from uh, Newton's second law of motion, F equals ma. So if you know F, you know m, you could calculate a. Uh, and, you know, once we calculate a, we can, we can use uh, uh, 
uh, calculus to calculate the velocity and we calculate the position at any uh, time uh, later on, uh, knowing the initial conditions, right? It's, things were relatively easy. However, with fluids, things were not as easy since, uh, you know, obviously a fluid is made up of individual particles, but, but tracking individual particles in a fluid is, is, would be very complicated uh, because you have literally an uncountable number of, of, of individual particles. So applying Newton's second law directly to a fluid is not, is not the answer. The answer is applying what's known as the control volume. So control volumes simplify the analysis by focusing on a specific region. And even with you know a more complicated boundary than shown here, it's relatively easy to keep track of what's coming into the boundary and what, com what goes out of the boundary. Uh, so here, for example, we have a, a, a pipe and so, you know, we could define the, the insides of the pipe as the control volume. So control volumes allow us to simplify uh, the problem and let us apply the laws of physics, such as the laws of momentum, energy conservation, and, and continuity to, to fluids, just like we did with, with uh, uh, back in classical physics when we were de dealing with an individual mass. So we'll see this, this, this play out in, in the next three chapters. Uh, on how we're going to basically rewrite Newton's laws of motion to uh, put them in this this uh, control volume uh, analysis, the control volume format. So here's a few essential characteristics of control volumes to get us started. So the boundary uh, enclosing a control volume is defined as what's called the control surface. So the por portion in red here would be the control surface. Uh, same thing with a, a move. So you can have a fixed control volume or you can have a moving control volume. Like here, for example, if we, if we have a fuel tank and, the, uh, and a rocket uh, traveling upward here, the, this control volume is going to be moving uh, as fluid passes through this control surface. This one we can fix in space, and so this control volume will not move. Uh, so... Fluids can enter or leave the control volume across the control surface. Um, both the control volume and the control surface can be any shape. So the red outlines the control uh, su surface and what's inside of it is, is the control volume. Um, so we've seen here control uh, volumes can be moving or they can be fixed. And we're going to readjust our, our conservation laws like conservation energy, conservation momentum, uh, so that we can rewrite them to hold uh, for control volumes. So let's look at the most simplest case we can imagine here. So this, this shows uh, a pipe co uh, connection with water coming in at A, point A. And uh, so you can see the water flow coming in at A and going out at B and C. Uh, so here we, we treat the uh, direction of areas as outward normal to the surface. And this is similar to what, if you took electrodynamics, um, you know, so, he, so here at A, uh, the area vector is outward normal. So what does normal mean? It means 90 degrees to the surface, outward normal to the surface. So it, it, the area vector at A would point to the left, the area vector for B would point upward, and the area vector for C would point out to the right. And the, uh, the velocity, as you can see, the water coming in at A and then splitting and going out at B and C. To find the flow, we also have to specify the, the, uh, the velocity uh, both in and out of the, each control surface. And so oftentimes it'll be given to us, uh, but otherwise we'll have to, uh, uh, we'll have to just have to know it. You know? So here in this picture, we're, we're sort of told that it comes in at A and it goes out at B and C. Um, now, the flow depends upon the dot product of V and A, as we've seen. That's the, the, the Q, Q value. Uh, Q equals V dot A. Uh, so here, you know, flow into a control surface uh, will be negative since V and A will be in the opposite directions, like here, for example, right? Uh, if you're going outward, they'll, uh, it'll be positive because you're in the same direction. So this shows, uh, this shows that specifically here. Uh, so V dot A here is positive, V dot A here is positive, V dot A here is negative. So let's look at the first law, the conservation of uh, mass. This, this relates to what's known as the continuity equation. Uh, so if we have 
uh, in the most general case, here we have our control volume. Uh, and it's defined by the control surface, which is, again is in red. Uh, this whole thing is what's called the system, right? And so here we have a, a control volume. So you have, uh, so to keep track, so his, his, let's imagine here we have some particles in here. So there's two ways for the number of particles to change inside of a control volume. You can have flow into the control volume, or you can have can flow out of control volume. So obviously flow in would increase the, the uh, the mass within here and flow outward would, would decrease the mass. The other way you could have change is for, uh, you know, you have some kind of uh, situation going on where the, the mass inside of here is increasing. Maybe it's a, some kind of nuclear reaction or chemical reaction where uh, you have local change within the control volume. So the continuities equation states that the local rate of change of mass within the control volume plus the net convective rate of which mass enters and leaves the control volume have to equal. So you have to have those balance. So uh, this first term is local change of mass within the control volume. So if that's, for example, if the mass in here was increasing by some kind of chemical reaction or, or some kind of uh, something of that order. We'll see some examples of that um, in, the, in a few of the examples. Uh, the other what this this term the second term is is the, is the flow in and out of the control volume uh, So here the, you see the little CVs that's control volume So that's the, the derivative of the density times the uh, DV. Well, this is mass, right? If you integrate density times DV that's mass So this is basically a rate of change of mass within the control volume this one is the uh, little CS is, is flow in and out of the control surface. And so this is your, your Q value, right? Density times times Q. Those have to be equal to zero. You have to conserve that. Uh, so this is what's known as the continuity equation. Now, there's a couple of special cases. If you have a fixed control volume that's completely filled with fluid, then the uh, for steady flow, there's there's not going to be any local change with uh, the fluid within the control volume. So, so in that case, the first term is zero. There's no change of mass. And so the first term is zero. So all you really have to worry about is the flow in and out of the control volume. Um, now you can further simplify this equation if, if the density is constant, um, which is typically is for a fluid, right? The, the, the fluid, you really don't change the density. If you have a gas, of course, well then... Uh, you know, you can change the density of a gas pretty easily. Uh, but let's say we have a, uh, it's incompressible as, as most fluids are. Well, then you can factor out the density of these two terms and you can write, write it like this. Well, basically it's just the sum of Q out minus the sum of Q in. And we'll see how, some examples of this. So if this looks confusing, um, and it probably does right now, but we'll, we'll look at some examples, some problems that in the next lecture, then this will become a lot clearer. So here, for example, let's uh, let's take a look at this case of an ideal fluid. Um, so here you have, for example, uh, you know you have fluid coming in at A and going out at B and C. Um, so here you can just basically sum these up. So here, remember it's a V dot A. So this is going to be V dot A is going to be negative. So it's going to be V times A, and the negative sign comes from the fact that it's a dot product. And since uh, in the case of B and C, they were in the same direction. You get positive terms here, right? So this is a pretty easy equation to set up. What this means in this case is that this term here has to uh, equal zero. So uh, typically you have to know everything but one thing to calculate, calculate it, right? Um, 